in 1938, almost as an afterthought in view of other constructions and reconstructions, it was decided to design a replacement for the aging 5,500-ton family of destroyer leader class light cruisers. As a result, in 1940, Japan laid down the first of the four 6,652-ton 6 Agano class. As is usual, many designs were looked at with varying protection, armor, and speed. The design that was finally chosen was one that was relatively light and what I would tactfully call off the shelf. Let's address the light issue first. Since Japan wasn't limited by the treaty anymore, this was more of an issue of industrial capacity and preference rather than treaty limitations, and it made sense. As destroyer leaders, they theoretically only had to be protected against and able to outgun destroyers. In the speed capacity as leaders, they had to be at least as fast as the destroyers they were leading. Clearly, Japan had learned its lesson from excessive top weight and was being more conservative. It was also helpful that they could scout for their destroyers by carrying a float plane. In regard to off the shelf, their main armament was the 6 inch 50 caliber guns that had been removed from the Congo and Fusos classes when they were modernized. These old guns were put into, or rather onto, new mounts. The new mounts weren't really turrets, but rather enclosed or shielded twin pedestal mounts. That is to say, there was minimal mechanical assistance for loading. For the most part, once the 100-pound shells and powder bags were hoisted up to the gun house, they had to be hand-loaded just like they had been 30 years earlier. Almost comically optimistic, these new mounts had an elevation of 55 degrees with the intent of using them for barrage anti-aircraft firing. Think about that a minute. At a time when anti-aircraft was all about how much metal you could throw at planes moving 300 miles an hour-ish, the gunners had to manhandle 100-pound shells on the violently moving ship. Agano was started June 18, 1940 and completed October 31, 1942. Noshiro was started September 4, 1941 and completed June 30, 1943. Yahagi was started November 11, 1941, and completed December 29, 1943. Sakawa was started November 21, 1942, and completed November 30, 1944. Main armament was six 6 inch 50 caliber guns in three twin enclosed mounts. Secondary armament was four 76 millimeter 60 caliber dual purpose guns in two twin mounts, one on either side of the forward mast. This gun was only used on these ships, so I'll let you imagine the logistical nightmare of supplying ammunition to them. Torpedo armament was two quad torpedo mounts on the center line behind the funnel and in front of the rear mast for the Type 93 long lance. One was mounted under the float plane handling platform, and the other was behind it, essentially under the catapult. Unlike the rebuilt heavy cruisers, there were no reloads. Being destroyer leaders, they also carried two depth charge racks at the stern for 36 depth charges. Two float planes could be carried on the platform behind the funnel, though there was no hangar, and they were launched from a single catapult behind that. Propulsion was provided by six boilers venting to the trunked funnel. These provided steam to the four turbines that generated 100,000 horsepower. Each ran one of the four propellers for a top speed of 35 knots. She had one rudder. Protection was again minimal, since they were meant only to fight destroyers. Side armor was 55 millimeters alongside the magazines, thickening to 60 millimeters alongside the machinery. The armored deck was at most 20 millimeters over the magazines and machinery. Turret armor was 19 millimeters. Modifications were few, mostly limited to more medium and light anti-aircraft and radar. In July of 1943, Agano was fitted with Type 21 radar. The rest were completed with it. In July of 1944, Noshiro and Yahagi were fitted with Types 13 and 22 radar. Agano loaded supplies upon completion in mid-November 1942 and left Japan for truck, arriving at the end of the month. In mid-December, she took part in the resupply of Wewak and conquest of Hollandia before returning to truck. 
In late January through early February 1943, she escorted the force providing distant cover for the evacuation of Guadalcanal. In May of 1943, she returned to Japan for overhaul and was part of the massive force slated to reinforce the garrison on Atu. The force fell before they could sail, though, so the operation was canceled. In July, now joined by Noshiro, they were part of the massive force that carried supplies from Japan to Rabul, then docked at Truk. In mid-September, Agano and Noshiro sailed with the fleet trying to intercept the U.S. carriers that had raided the Gilberts. In October, they sailed again when American carriers raided Wake and the Marshalls. Again, they were too late and returned to Truk. At the start of November 1943, Agano took part in the Battle of Empress Augusta Bay, while Noshiro stayed at Truk, but escaped back to Rabul with no damage. After the battle, Noshiro escorted a powerful force of heavy cruisers from Truk to Rabul. Both only suffered minor damage when carrier aircraft raided Rabul the next day, but Agano wasn't as lucky when a larger force came back on November 11th. Hit at the stern by an aircraft torpedo in the raid, Agano limped out of port toward Truk for repairs, escorted by Noshiro. The next day, at 7 a.m., Agano was hit again at the stern by a torpedo from the submarine Scamp and had to be towed to Truk. In late January, Noshiro returned to Japan for a refit. With temporary repairs at Truk completed at 10 p.m. on February 15, 1944, and with only her two starboard propellers working, Agano left Truk heading for Japan. The next day, at 4.45 p.m., she was hit on the starboard side by two torpedoes from the submarine skate. Burning with her boiler rooms flooded and listing to starboard, she was abandoned. The next morning, at 5.17 a.m. on February 17th, Agano rolled over and sank. Also in February 1944, now joined by Yahagi, Noshiro transferred from Japan to the East Indies along with most of the fleet. In early June, Noshiro escorted the relief convoy to Biak, then both took part in the Battle of the Philippine Sea, where they escaped damage. After the battle, they returned to Japan with the fleet for refit, then again sailed to the East Indies. In October, they sailed with center force to the Battle of Leyte Gulf. Neither was damaged during the battle, but as the force retreated on the 26th, they were attacked by carrier aircraft. At about 8.50 a.m., Noshiro was hit by an aircraft torpedo that knocked out her boilers, leaving her listing and dead in the water. At 10.22, she was hit by another torpedo. At 11.10 a.m. on October 26th, Noshiro finally sank bow first. Undamaged Yahagi escorted the battered fleet back to the East Indies afterward. In mid-November, she escorted the battleships back to Japan, arriving at the end of the month. Her final action was escorting the battleship Yamato as she bonsai charged Okinawa. After seven torpedo and 12 bomb hits at 2 p.m. on April 7, 1945, she rolled over to starboard and sank. Sakawa was completed at the end of November 1944, but with very little fuel available, she did pretty much nothing for the rest of the war. Post-war, after reparation duty, the dilapidated ship was relegated to the bikini bomb tests where she sank during test ABLE.